so we can start so welcome uh, friends uh, to this fresh lecture series and we are starting off with a very uh, pertinent topic and uh, this is extremely important for a number of reasons i mean there's a lot of research going on in this area and uh, for whatever reason there's not too much of uh, debate and discussion or at least to the extent it should be uh, in our field and in allied fields so it's a pleasure to talk about this and uh, we've done some research on this topic so hopefully this will uh, uh, start off some debate or there'll be uh, certain new things to think about as we go along so uh, as i carry on uh, if there are questions you can just uh, ask me in between as well because uh, uh, there are a lot of, I'm sure there are a lot of talking points as we go along. So I'll just, you know, without any further ado, I'll start off the presentation. And uh, I've used the title, How Google, Facebook, and Other Surveillance Giants Control Our Lives. Now, for whatever reason, I mean, it's, it's, it might be very, uh, you know, ironic to... Uh, 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 you know, see that we are doing this on Google Meet. So we'll be talking a lot about, you know, what Google and Facebook and others, you know, they have been doing at times surreptitiously, but we, are, we have to use a platform like this and even maybe Facebook and YouTube to uh, put our uh, voices forth. So uh, there are three different uh, books that, you know, I have consulted for this particular uh, presentation. The one on your left, uh, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, Capitalism by uh, Shoshana Zuboff. This is a remarkable book. It's a huge book. And the first two sections are what I'll be using uh, in today's uh, presentation. Uh, the one on the extreme right is uh, by an organization called Amnesty International. And uh, as you can understand, uh, even the title of my presentation today is uh, uh, you know, uh, inspired by uh, this particular uh, book uh, that has come out recently. It says, uh, How the Business Model of Google and Facebook Threatens Human Rights. So my uh, presentation is uh, on a different perspective. It's about, you know, how they control our lives, how they manipulate us to do things that we otherwise wouldn't have done. The one in the middle is, is by Nick Coldry and uh, Ulysses Majayas. It has been there for uh, almost a year. And this is about how data is colonizing human life and appropriating it for capitalism. So as you can understand, it's a lot about uh, political economy. It's a lot about, you know, how the surveillance infrastructure is used for a very, very new kind of an economics. And as we will see, this is uh, the paradigm is, is so very different from what we know or uh, or the things that are known to us that oftentimes you know, we try and use the same metaphors for this new kind of situation that has arisen. But we'll just see in a moment's time that this is very, very different from what we know or very different from uh, what we can imagine even. So uh, let's define surveillance capitalism first of all. And that's what you know, Shoshana Zuboff. Uh, and this book has been highly, highly recommended by, by many people. And I'm sure it will be uh, compulsory reading for many of us you know, in, in uh, advanced classes uh, as far as media and communication classes are concerned. So what surveillance capitalism, uh, capitalism does is that it claims human experience as free raw material. So uh, our experience, whatever we do or whatever we might not do, they take this as a raw material. So whatever I experience on the internet or you know, however I be uh, behave even in my real life, which might not be directly related to my internet behavior, that uh, experience is a free raw material for them and they translate that into behavioral data uh, as we know that you know some of this data is imp uh, important for them to improve services and that is how you know Google has uh, or, or even Facebook has managed to be the behemoths they uh, are at the moment because uh, they are continuously improving the uh, service whatever they are providing us but the problem here is that the behavioral data that they draw from us is not only for improving the service they provide to us, but a, a large chunk of it is declared as proprietary behavioral surplus. It is something that belongs to these companies. And then this surplus is fed into advanced uh, machine learning processes, basically, and they are fabricated into prediction products that anticipate what you will do now or uh, you know in the next uh, few moments or maybe uh, in the uh, near future so basically what it does is it extracts uh, human behavioral data 
and then it uses that data and as you can imagine that data is is like you know trillions of data points so it uses this massive massive data point you know massive to the extent that we can't even imagine how massive that is and then it uses this behavioral data to uh, fabricate prediction products so they can predict uh, very very uh, precisely what we will do or what we might not do as you will as as i go on you know we'll find out you know how this prediction uh, works and uh, how they can not just predict what we do but they can even modify our behavior and that is where the entire problem is and that is where you know uh, this should deserve a lot more uh, importance this particular uh, topic than uh, than we give it uh, at the moment as i said at the beginning the existing frames of reference that we have the existing frames of thought they will focus on the familiar something that we know and uh, when we are into an unfamiliar territory even then we try to uh, use the familiar framework to define that and what it does is that it contributes to normalizing the abnormal i mean we are uh, not even uh, willing to uh, accept it as something so abnormal something so unprecedented that we are not even prepared to fight it we don't even know uh, the uh, impact it has upon us so that is uh, one of the problems that it is so unprecedented and most of the times we are talking about uh, about the uh, new surveillance dynamics in terms of the familiar uh, metaphors that are known to us so uh, they are uh, dangerous because they cannot be uh, reduced to the known harms so most of the times when we talk about uh, uh, surveillance we are talking in terms of either monopoly and privacy and that is where you know a lot of the responses are uh, what we get i mean uh, you might have heard a lot of people uh, saying that it does not matter to me okay privacy uh, there's nothing private about me everything is, is public so it doesn't not matter to me or okay it's a monopoly so what it doesn't uh, matter to us so since we deal with these new surveillance paradigms in the monopoly or in the privacy uh, uh, framework that is why we are not aware of the dangers that uh, this uh, surveillance economics uh, presents to us and that is why uh, you know we are just using it in terms of maybe you know to to enhance privacy or to you know uh, bring down monopolies but uh, as we will see it's it's much beyond that it's much bigger or it's much more dangerous than uh, what we uh, assume it to be uh, so uh, before we start it's like uh, uh, you know just a background to this it's that the surveillance reaches well beyond the information which users provide when engaging with google and facebook so it's not the information that you provide and most many of times as information may not be exact uh, what it is so you might give a email address which you don't use or you know you give a date of birth which might not be right phone numbers you have to give correct most of the times because uh, uh, you know uh, there might be times when you need the phone to uh, unlock your uh, uh, google account or your facebook account or whatever so that's that's how they ensure that you give the right phone numbers at least but there is a lot of other information it includes location it includes search history it includes the app use and so on and so forth we'll find out the uh, you know the the uh, uh, amount of uh, you know humongous information that they gather while uh, you know this uh, surveillance process goes on uh google uh, according to zuboff and many others is the pioneer of surveillance capitalism both in terms of thought and in, in, in practice and we'll see that you know when it started off in 1998 i have a, a document by uh, the google founders and there we will see you know uh, their uh, ideology was very different from what it is so they are the ones who did all this experimentation and the implementation but they are not the only actor on this particular path so uh, in the beginning of the 21st century they were the ones you know and we'll find out you know what what kind of things they have pioneered you know in terms of uh, thought and practice etc cetera, etc cetera. but they have the wherewithal to do all this experimentation and all this development uh, to to fine tune the surveillance products to precisely not just predict human behavior but also manipulate human behavior and that is where you know i'm trying to or that is where the presentation will lead to uh this is what i was talking about uh, I, i'm not sure whether you can see that so what i'll try and do is to zoom uh, just uh, so this was about sergey brin and lawrence page in this uh, uh, uh journal article and uh, there they spoke about the anatomy uh, anatomy of a 
large scale hypertextual web engine. This was uh, way back in, if you can see here, it was in 1998. So this is where the, you know, the Google project started. And there are, uh, uh, you know, things that they talk about that, uh, and the most important thing that they talk, uh, you know, spoke about at that point of time, the Sergey Brin and Lawrence page was uh, the fact that they were not going to use it for advertisements. This is exactly what they say in the paper, you know, uh, further down in the paper. I'm not going to uh, talk, uh, you know, in details about this particular paper. You can just, you know, uh, Google uh, this, you know, Sergey Brin and Lawrence page about the anatomy of a large scale hypertextual web search engine and you'll get it it's it's freely available and it's highly highly cited uh, this is what they suggested i mean this is from the article itself we expect that advertising funded search engines will be inherently biased towards the advertisers and away from the needs of the consumers so they were uh, you know kind of apprehensive about the uh, uh, power of the advertisers we believe that the issue of advertising causes enough mixed incentives that it is crucial to have a competitive search engine that is transparent and in the academic realm. This is how Google started off with. So to just you know provide a search engine which was uh, extremely uh, user friendly, and at the same time it was not going the advertisement path, nor was it you know going to uh, charge money from. Uh, uh, websites for uh, uh, you know putting up their uh, search results at the top. So initially, that is how uh, Google started off with. And uh, they made money at that point of time by licensing their products to various corporates. So anybody who would want to use the search engine would be, you know, license the product. And that is how it uh, carried on for some time. But as you understand, uh, you know, uh, this kind of an idea had lots of venture capitalists uh, funding their uh, project. And uh, it, it went on to a situation where those people wanted to uh, you know ask for uh, you know uh, google to uh, become financially self sufficient as they would say so uh, search is what was you know it, it created that feedback loop people need you know search needed people to learn from and people needed search to learn from so the google search it needed lots and lots and lots of people to search there so that you know they could uh, uh, find out you know how to fine tune or how to uh, you know make their algorithms even more uh, relevant you know and provide all the comprehensive search results so they just you know uh, there are uh, discussions about the algorith uh, algorithms i don't want to get into those details uh, right now but what it meant was that you know this this was a symbiotic kind of an arrangement that mo the more people came to google the better google became and the more uh, uh, value people would get from google so more queries mean, more, meant more learning, more learning pr produced more relevance, and more relevance meant more searches and more users. So this cycle was very, very important. And anybody you know who uh, started off with Google would, would uh, know you know that everything or whatever you wanted to search, you know it, you could just fine tune it to get anything and everything that you could uh, across the world. So it was it was a very uh, 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 you know uh, easy thing for Google to get uh, you know almost everybody on the internet onto its platform and that was you know largely because of uh, its initial ideology of providing value to uh, consumers without getting uh, too uh, 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 you know uh, too much bothered about advertisement and revenues and all that as i said you know uh, in the late 2000 when the uh, uh, promoters you know they, they, their pressure led to uh, google decide on something which is seemingly doesn't appear very uh, uh, you know uh, it appears very innocuous of providing targeted advertisements to individuals uh, rather than individuals you know typing in a keyword to search advertisements or whatever google would find out who are the people who could be provided this particular kind of an uh, advertisement so the behavioral data that Google earlier used to improve the quality of the search results would now be used to, you know, uh, give a personality to the users. And, you know, according to your uh, behavioral data, that kind of target advertising would be provided to you. And that ad sense was a revolution in many senses because, you know, uh, it, it uh, led to a lot of, uh, you know, advertisers reaching out to people they actually wanted to reach out to because you know as we know the advertising industry involves a lot of wastage and if that wastage could be taken care of by just you know putting it precisely to people who mattered then you know uh, google would would uh, uh, you know uh, then then advertisers would uh, 
be extremely happy about it. And that's how, you know, uh, it started off, you know, the Google using data for the first time, not for uh, improvement of service, but to, you know, know more about the people uh, who were there on Google so that, you know, they could target these advertisements to them. So that's how it started off. In April 2002, that was a, that's a, you know, remarkable Eureka movement, uh, you know, moment for uh, uh, Google uh, data team in many senses. In April 2002, and in those days, you know, what happened was that Google data team would, you know, look back at search logs to see what people were searching for. So at regular intervals, you know, people would come down with all the data and they would want to see that, okay, this is, this is the largest search or this is this in this area, people are searching this one and so forth. Uh, what they saw was that there was, you know, a, a lot of search for a, you know, a peculiar kind of a thing. And it was Carol Brady's maiden name. And they just wanted to dig deeper. You know, why suddenly, why, why about this? You know, why not about some, some known celebrities or whatever? Uh, they found out that the exact time when people were searching for Carol Brady's maiden name was when this particular question was asked on you know their version of Khan Banega Karodhpati, which is uh, who wants to be a millionaire, and as you know, uh, there are you know different time zones on the United States of America, right from the, you know Hawaii to the East Coast. So, so you know whenever uh, and these programs they are you know telecast at different time zones in different areas. So as soon as you know this particular program was broadcast in a particular time zone, the search queries immediately flooded it. So Google could actually predict that now, you know, half an hour from now, in the next time zone, people are going to search for Carol Brady's maiden name. Or something which was happening in real life or in the real world was reflected on Google servers. And that is when, you know, they, uh, it, it, it came to them that, you know, they can, they can you know, mine it for, for uh, you know, huge things. Because uh, now, you know, they could actually predict or they could actually, you know, find a reflection of what was happening on the ground uh, on their servers. And uh, that is what led to, you know, uh, the Google uh, now, you know, mining data uh, to, uh, you know, uh, reading users' minds, you know, just to uh, uh, not only behavioral data, but also to find out what they were thinking, what they were feeling and what they were doing. And uh, we will, you know, find out in deeper, uh, you know, in, in more detail about, you know, all, all these things. But their unique access to behavioral data, one, because uh, there were there, the amount of people who were doing it was huge. And by now they had perfected this algorithm of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, providing uh, or getting these user profile information to the, uh, you know, precisest uh, possible extent that everybody who was on Google, if... Uh, you know, uh, for a length of time, they would, you know, the Google's uh, engine so it, uh, would know what uh, that person was like. So instead of us searching Google, it, you know, just turned, the paradigm turned in a sense where Google was searching us. So this, as I, you know, I, I keep on talking about Google, I'll talk about Facebook as well, but uh, as well, but at the same time, we must understand that this is not only about you know these two companies these are just you know indicators since this is how it started that's why you know we keep referring to uh, google at the beginning so that is when they found out that okay there is something which is uh, a surplus and this surplus can be a game changing zero cost asset because google was not spending any money for this exclusive raw material this raw material was exclusive to them because there was no one who came close to them. It was almost, you know, almost everybody on the planet was there. And, you know, who, whoever had internet connection was there. And, uh, you know, they would now, you know, use secure more and more behavioral data than it needed to serve its users. So there was this shift once again, you know, instead of using the data to uh, serve its users, we'll see that in a diagram in a moment's time. They now, you know, stumbled upon this surplus and that surplus was the game changing thing. And uh, Zubov suggests that, you know, this was a game changing zero cost asset that was di diverted from service improvement toward a genuine and highly lucrative market exchange. We'll find out and see, you know, how lucrative it was. So initially, uh, I'll again, you know, zoom this to uh, make sense of it. This again is from uh, Zubov's book. Initially, it was like... Uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever your behavioral data was, you know, uh, whenever a user walked into Google, 
you know, he provided all those behavioral data and, you know, through these analytical engines, those behavioral data were used for service improvement. So this is what was going on in Google and whatever was, you know, uh, whatever be behavior was uh, not required, that was no longer, you know, it was just, uh, uh, it was useless. It was not for, uh, you know, any, uh, Google had no usage for that. So this this was the initial uh, uh, behavioral value reinvestment cycle. The, whatever the whatever behavior could be rendered in in terms of data, you know, whatever behavior could be translated in terms of data, and that data would be used by their machine intelligence algorithms for service improvements. And this is how it carried on. Later on, we'll see that you know uh, it just had a different. Uh, uh, it led to the Google's extraction imperative. Now, there are uh, uh, parallels with, you know, the Ford's invention, with, which revolutionized productions, you know, and we, we know about the uh, Ford model, so on and so forth, that the economy of scale and all. What Google's inventions brought was the extraction imperative, means extraction of these raw materials. And these raw materials are our behavioral data at an ever-expanding scale. So it demanded economies of scale because the more data it had, the more precisely it could predict or the more uh, granular data it had, the better it was for them to, you know, analyze and predict. So that is a very, very important imperative of surveillance economics, the extraction imperative of extraction of extracting as much data as possible. And that explains, you know, why a lot of companies like maybe even Twitter or Facebook they are very loath to, you know, throw out people away from the platform. So you will uh, find out that, you know, even if there are a lot of uh, uh, discrepancies or a lot of people are doing things that they shouldn't be doing on their platform, they are not summarily removed because removable, uh, you know, if you start removing people, that means, you know, uh, uh, that is that is a loss for you. So you are, uh, you know, removing a certain class of people whose uh, data you would require to, you know, make your predictions or to, uh, uh, you know, to, to uh, perform all the activities that you do. So that is why they uh, want to extract data from whoever, whosoever is uh, available as much as possible. So this again is very important and this, this, this follows from what we just did. So again, I'll zoom it because uh, this is a... So this is what we did earlier. If, if you can see that, this is how uh, we... Uh... This is how it was that users, the rendered behavior, you know, uh, some of it would be used for behavioral data from analytics and for service improvement. And that is how it would go. Down. Instead of the exhaust, now this is the surplus. This surplus data is there used as a new means of production. And they can be used to, you know, uh, create these prediction uh, products. They can be used for, you know, for, for you know, how, how, uh, these people can behave in the future. So, you know, those kind of things. And also a lot of these surveillance revenues. And this led to, you know, a huge amount of, so it's almost like, you know, a gold mine of data. So instead of the behavioral data being used only for the service improvement, now that data went into a much larger cycle, a much, uh, uh, you know, uh, a much more, uh, uh, as I say, uh, 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 a cycle which would uh, be used to uh, continuously so it's it's like you know it keeps on adding to what they already know and this this cumulative cycle is what uh, is 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 uh, uh, giving them an advantage say for example a new company starts coming in and, and starts to think of surveillance they would be starting off with a massive massive disadvantage even governments can't you know do things that they've been doing and we'll find out that you know especially after 9 11 you know even the governments were following the google example so instead of the data being regularly, uh, you know, used and thrown away, the, the, this data is much larger, much bigger. In fact, this uh, cycle is a much bigger cycle than the earlier one. And this is where the uh, new paradigm lies. Uh, one problem, one way in which this could have been solved, uh, like you know, a lot of people suggest, is by, you know, some kind of regulation, some, some kind of government regulation about... Uh, what uh, should be done or what should not be done or how much data should be extracted or how much data should not be extracted. So instead of, you know, uh, uh, government regulations, uh, the uh, 
problem is that uh, you know uh, over the years and this is again you know i'm just uh, taking a slight detour from uh, surveillance capitalism to talk about you know re regulation and i'll again come uh, i'll again come back to this uh, so instead of uh, the government uh, uh, you know uh, regulation something that people want regulation itself is is a, is, is a bad term and you know when you have these heroes you know uh, all these people uh, all these uh, software giants people at the helm of affairs they are like public heroes so uh, they could you know get away with things like do not regulate us or else and there were you know logic like you know uh, this is a company which is very new and you know these are uh, new logics and also there should be no question of any government regulation or whatever so any government regulation was uh, out of the question again this is about a research this is as i said not related to this but this just shows that you know over a period of time there is a deep seated anxiety about the you know uh, coercive nature of administrative government we do not want government interference and that is one you know filter that could have been applied and that was you know very skillfully avoided by these giants because you know any government regulation would have uh, led them to you know scale down their surveillance activities in a huge way uh now you know another thing that you know uh, accidentally or you know otherwise led to a lot of acceptance among you know public about uh, you know the the uh, utility of surveillance was the september 11 incident and uh, you know that is when everybody you know uh, uh, you know kind of agreed that surveillance was necessary for uh, national security so lots of you know all those uh, exclusionary and intrusive surveillance practices they were you know kind of accepted by people at that point of time because you know that was important for uh, uh, national security and that is how you know uh, we have a uh, you know concept of surveillance exceptionalism there a lot of people uh, think that okay we need these kind of uh, techniques just to you know take care of uh, the terrorist or you know the future terrorist activities so on and so forth so this was one reason which why you know uh, the google and all other companies could manage to do all the other kind of surveillance that they do and uh, it's also about the soft power of google and companies like that where their influence over academic work and the larger uh, cultural conversation is so vital that you know uh, public opinion can can hardly you know go against you know the kind of activities they do and there's a lot of uh, corporate social uh, responsibility activities they do so it's virtually impossible for uh, or it's virtually very difficult for governments to rein in their power because the moment any government starts to act there you know there will be a uh, public opinion against that so the google's influence has you know grown over the years because of you know their their influence over academic work and you know even the uh, cultural domain so this is another question that you know uh, uh, people uh, uh, keep on asking if it is a search company why is it investing in smart home devices in wearables in self driving cars if say, facebook is a shows, social network why is it de developing drones and augmented reality is it only to you know provide us things that we probably don't require i mean uh, do we require all these uh, devices for for uh, you know our everyday work i mean we'll find out uh, uh, how it goes on another uh, uh, terrain of uh, behavioral surplus another area where you know google ended up you know uh, looking for behavioral surplus was the android platform so the moment uh, internet shifted to uh, uh, mobile phones uh, that's where you know the google search and google services they you know ended up uh, pro, you know using uh, android and it, it it would sustain the uh, efforts of behavioral surplus and you know uh, getting all the data that was possible about uh, everybody who was there on the internet so how does it extend it it extends through all these activities i mean without us realizing it extends us through the digital books that we read you know it, that it provides them about the options about okay he is that kind of a person and he or she is reading that kind of a book collection of personal information you know all there are all chapters on that on their street view wifi you know they would you know go along with their street view uh, take a, Uh, taking pictures for their you know google earth and all that kind of things and as they as the cars would go on it would uh, you know capture all the information about the wifi that were there on the way the capture of voice communication voice i'll talk about in a moment so all the you know the alexa the the siri and the, the uh, google assistant and what have you all these voice communications are you know used in the same uh, laboratory to 
you know find out more about you and to predict more about you not just predict about you but uh, we will see also to modulate or to change the way in which you uh, function or the change the way in which you would uh, behave in in particular settings bypassing of privacy settings so even if you say that i do not uh, want to give this information there are ways in which they would by bypass that so it's not always that you know uh, that you have to agree to that and in many cases if you do not agree to their terms and conditions you can't even go to the next page so whether it is your you know wifi enabled uh, um, air condition air conditioner or your refrigerator or even your smart tv or whatever all these devices and you know i mean if i start talking about that i'll take hours and hours to get into all that but uh, all those things are used as surveillance devices as extraction devices to gather as much information as possible to fine tune their information to fine tune their intelligence about human beings in general even the manipulation of search results or extensive retention of search data so whatever we are searching it stays in their servers for for a very very long time tracking of smartphone location data even if you turn off your gps or whatever they would you know keep on tracking your location data wearable technology so whether it's about uh, your you know you're taking about health data or any kind of other data so that's where you know uh, the surveillance is uh, extended and you know it can be extended to uh, know a lot more about you than you can you know imagine even the facial recognition capabilities the uh, the collection of student data for commercial purposes all these are uh, uh, you know highly do documented consolidation of user profiles across all google's uh, services and devices nowadays as you can see you know even the other uh, you know google's various uh, products they all uh, resemble each other through do drones through body sensors you know you can just put it put on like your uh, you know um, a banded kind of a thing and you know it will it will uh, transmit data to uh, wherever so uh, the internet of things itself is one big uh, uh, setup where you know uh, all this data can be extracted or all that data can be uh, extrapolated to uh, you know give uh, a, a more uh, precise information about uh, us neurotransmitters digital assistants i mean this is what you know uh, probably you don't even require digital assistants but uh, the idea that if i have a digital assistant and you i can just tell alexa or i can just tell uh, you know um, uh, siri to do something or whatever and every time we ask them to do something that's when you know we are providing them even more data not just you know in the content but in the intonation of your voice because we'll just see that uh, this these uh, emotions are a very important indicator in, which, in how you know they would find out that this is the time when you might buy or this is the time you might not buy or this is the time you might you know make a voting decision or this is the time you might not make that decision so it extends to you know that particular level so uh, all these voice assistants are again you know a very important data because whenever you are talking to uh, you know uh, one of these assistants you are you know talking in private and that's where you know your data is is, is, is very clean as they, they would suggest so that's where you know uh, uh, the google surveillance capabilities or the surveillance capabilities of all these giants they extend even beyond the realm of you know uh, things that we can imagine this is what happened in uh, uh, you know uh, australia i'll talk a bit more about that so this this uh, location tracking policy was on even if you uh, you know locked out your location even if you switched off your location google would you know keep on tracking the uh, location so uh, the extraction dynamic it includes you know it includes the searches and it includes emails texts photos uh, uh, you know uh, all these kind of things and it's uh, uh, location communication patterns attitudes preferences interests emotions illnesses so social networks that you go through uh, the purchases you make and a lot more so this uh, this is just an indicator of you know the kind of information that is taken and this, as i said this information is taken to uh, know more about us so that they can make predictions about us for the products of the advertisers that's one end and then also to manipulate our behavior and that is where the problem is that these surveillance giants now have the capacity to manipulate uh, our behavior we'll find out you know how it happens so uh, again you know I'll zoom it this is the uh, third figure of the same thing so the behavioral surplus or the extraction imperative is there in the online world they gather information about us from the online world but the prediction imperative is in the real world 
and you know uh, the uh, more precise the prediction the better it will be for them so that is why they require all those millions and billions and trillions of points of data so that they can make uh, predictions with a lot of uh, uh, precision and then you know it can also even lead to modified behavior we'll talk about this modified behavior also in a moment's time so it it extends so this territory is no longer the online world but it is now into the physical world into our daily life into our body and self and it it into our modified behaviors so that is where uh, this is become that, that is where it has come so uh, i mean uh, it, it it is there you know so so i mean as 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 you travel uh, this is this is uh, just one i mean many of us would have you know faced things like that his android phone prompted him to download the mcdonald's app at the very moment that he crossed the threshold of the restaurant so they were tracking them you know for for long and he, they knew that okay he might require food at that point of time so this is actually happening and uh, i don't want to get into pubg you know where people would uh, pay them to you know show them on their screens that okay that that's where you have to go so they, it would lead them to uh, uh, you know restaurants or to malls or whatever so it it is ac actually now happening on the real world so it, the the tracking is there on the online world and the prediction and the change is now happening in the physical world uh the same with uh, uh, facebook they you know the like button there it it helps them to provide uh, uh, all the information that they have about us uh even if you log out of the site uh, it was found out that the google would uh, sorry not google facebook would keep on tracking you so we're talking about facebook here so these surveillance devices include smart tv it includes the smart appliances it includes voices it includes toys and there are you know i won't take the names of the companies but there are you know toys which are you know the, the these intelligent toys where they would be tracking information they would be recording voices even smart tv uh, i'm sure you many of us would have heard about that the smart tv would actually you know record conversations to find out you know uh, more about you so uh, Uh, actually that means you know uh, the the uh, outward or or the uh, thing that they uh, tell us is that you know they're using this to make our experience better but at the end they want uh, more and more detailed information about us to uh, predict our uh, behavior in the future uh, there was this fabulous book you know called snoop by sam gosling and uh, you know this is uh, i'm just you know taking a slight you know uh, backward step to you know suggest that you know these are the things that have been happening uh, for quite some time now so uh, for example there are these you know five basic personality types either it's openness people who are you know open to feelings or curious or creative or whatever there's a conscientious people who are you know self disciplined you know achievement oriented whatever there are there are agreeable people you know who are warm and compassionate and cooperative there are extrovert people and there are new uh, people who are uh, uh, said to belong to the neuro uh, neuroticism uh, category people who are uh, you know susceptible to unpleasant uh, emotions so in this particular book uh, sam gosling pointed out you know just by looking at people's uh, homes they could predict about you know the the you know people's personality characteristic now as you can understand with the amount of data that you know facebook and uh, others have uh, the prediction is a lot more precise so whatever you put in or the very fact that you decide to you know like uh, certain things or whatever uh, gives them with a you know huge advantage so this was this paper by golby crowbels and turner in uh, you know this chi computer uh, uh journal and this is where you know they could predict personality with social media your social media use can be uh, you know uh, a, a very important uh, uh, raw material to predict your exact personality so uh, you know your entire personal characteristic uh, you know whether you are you are uh, you know you you have this much of openness or this much of neuroticism or whatever this can be predicted without even you know having met you uh, for uh, any times so, and it's about the metadata it's not only about you know uh, how much you are you know what you are uh, putting out on facebook but how much time you are uh, you know spending on a particular uh, platform for example so they can you know uh, not only predict about your personality these five personality types but they can also predict about you know uh, things like uh, your your uh, you know satisfaction with life and all such things so uh, your twitter profile your selfies your instagram photos whatever they can give people uh, uh, they can give uh, these uh, 
machine learning algorithms a huge uh, insight into your exact personality and now this personality has been you know uh, further uh, broken down into you know more and more precise characteristics for example the uh, uh target these 12 categories of you know wh whether you are excited whether you are in harmony whether you are curious or ideal or close or or, or you believe in self expression or you know practical or stable or whatever and even five dimensions of values so i'm just you know giving these examples these are all from research that has been done recently to suggest that this is the information that is possible for uh, these surveillance giants to get us so in in other words you know they can make uh, these uh, you know personality uh, uh, correlate uh, predictions about us to a very very precise level and uh, cambridge analytica i'm sure most of us would have heard about you know their involvement in uh, surveillance and all their ceo alexander nix you know claimed to have data to an individual level where we have somewhere close to 4 or 5000 data points in every adult in the united states uh, i'm not sure how true that claim is but this is just an indicator about you know that if you have access to the facebook or the google or the you know or or microsoft even um, uh, their database then you can have you know that much amount of uh, data points on every adult in in, in every every uh, uh, you know uh, state and the amount and, and and as i said you know it need not be about your uh, the time you spent on uh, your online activity i mean that uh, carries on beyond that as well and there is uh, uh you know this new uh, kind of a thing about you know emotional analytics so they can even detect your smile your joy your humor your amazement your excitement surprise frown sadness disappointment everything so over time your interest uh, you know uh, tracking your emotional type to find out which is the exact time where you would be interested in certain kinds of content so we will just talk about you know a particular thing that broke out in australia recently in a moment's time so this effective computing market is expected to be it was expected to be 54 billion dollars before the covid uh, uh, crisis so it will be near about by next year so this brings us to the question why should we be bothered why why should you know it affect us so, and that is where you know uh, the, now i'm into the final part of my presentation so all the extraction the imperative all the imperative of extracting uh, all the you know granular details about us what is it for it is for a very important thing and it is for uh, you know something that uh, we are not even uh, aware of and that is behavior modification so just like you know sensors were used to modify people's behavior uh, you know uh, like like for example they say that this is what a scientist there says that sensors are used to modify people's behavior just as easily as they modify device behavior there are many great things we can do with internet of things like lowering the heat in all houses on your street so that the transformer is not overloaded so they can lower down your uh, you know electric bulbs or whatever so that it's not heated up at an individual level it also means the power to take actions that can override what you are doing or to put you on a path that you did not choose and that is where you know we are talking of a new kind of a paradigm and that is where this surveillance goes beyond privacy and monopoly because it is leading up to a situation where they can modify i mean uh, even if they can modify the behavior of a very small percentage of people that would be enough to uh, you know ruin democracies or that would be enough to you know uh, make a certain markets grow and others you know just fall down so uh, that is what is uh, now uh, uh, going on with surveillance dynamics so it's about you know extracting information then making those predictions and using those predictions for a behavioral modification and that is where the problem is uh this is what uh, uh, you know has been there for quite some time and uh, richard thaler even won the nobel prize in economics in 2018 for behavioral economics and this is about nudge so this is about you know the uh, and it shows very uh, scientifically about you know the choice architecture that is provided to you something that we study in our framing theory as well so by providing those uh, choice architectures i don't have the time to get into the details of all that it's possible to nudge you towards a particular kind of behavior uh, shoshana zuboff also talks about two other you know behavior modification techniques the one is uh, herding and the other is conditioning conditioning again is something which was uh, uh, which is there in the uh, uh, behavioral sciences for quite some time and this particular book was uh, uh, 
published in 1971 and that is when it was imagined that you know uh, you know this this basically talks about positive reinforcement and all and then even then you know there was a lot of uh, uh, talk lot of debate about you know uh, the uh, how unethical etc it is but uh, he imagines the pervasive technology of behavior that one day enable the application of behavior modification methods across human populations so since these giants they have the wherewithal to uh, uh, you know reach out to uh, people you know across uh, national boundaries across uh, you know religions across uh, uh, ethnic identity so on and so forth so uh, they have this massive uh, uh, power to influence people in a particular way knowing the precise details you know on the thousands of data points that we provide them so since it doesn't involve us and uh, you know one important thing that works for them is that they have they have done it or they do it without uh, us knowing that it is being done and that is where you know uh, one of the uh, problems is that the moment we realize that this is what the data can be used for or this is what it is used for then probably we would be slightly aware or we could be using it in a different way but the manner in which it has already been accumulated gives them a lot of power over you know all such things so uh, this is what uh, they say that uh, you know the prediction has to approximate certainty so it's not about you know uh, uh, you know making predictions that are you know uh, correct in a particular way so as you can see a lot of machine learning techniques you know they are not very good with uh, translations for for the time being but i'm sure you know they are continuously improving the system so that you know you can just uh, use the same phrase you know and to get it exact translations in different voices and all so uh, since you know uh, the system uh, produces these predictions this, this you know keeps on continuously improving the system so that you know uh, the, the the gap between the prediction and observation is, is is narrowed so it's like they want to make those predictions almost certain with with almost certainty that okay this is a kind of a person and this is what he might vote for this is what he might buy or this is this is a, a a particular uh, uh, you know topic that he might have a decision on or that this is a particular area where he might you know believe or he might have a particular belief about so uh, it it's about you know figuring the construction of you know changing person's behavior and then changing how lots of people make their day to day decisions and that's where you know uh, we should be uh, concerned about so again you know this is from a book that you know again from a recent very recent uh, article this was in nature so this was about a 61 million person experiment in social influence and political mobilization so 61 million means about you know 6.1 crore facebook users in you know uh, uh, 2010 us congress election how using certain impulses you know uh, giving you know certain uh, you know uh, some people were given uh, pictures about you know their friends suggesting that i voted so that would you know um, kind of uh, influence the per person to vote as well so on and so forth so there are a lot of details about that i don't want to get into the details of that but uh, suffice it to say that you know uh, there are experiments and there are there are these uh, very successful experiments about you know how uh, you know uh, political mobilization can be done through you know providing certain uh, impulses to uh, voters so this is this is this is the point again you know this is about uh, you know emotional contagion so just like you know uh, contagion basically if you, if you you know one if if you see one person outraged you know it leads to a lot of other people you know outraging about the same you know similar people outraging about the same issues so this is one way in which you know the online messages can affect your offline behavior so if you see some of your people you know angry about certain things and then you end up being angry or or you know this emotional contagion again is something that has been worked out uh, in in recent research so just uh, this is just to you know demonstrate the kind of uh, uh, precision and the kind of uh, scientific uh, techniques that are being adopted to influence our offline behavior and to uh, modify our offline behaviors this is what happened in australia as i was suggesting where uh, uh, facebook was targeting you know uh, insecure youngsters to buy things when they could you know find out that okay they are angry now or they are they are they are they are feeling emotionally vulnerable now so this is the time they can buy this particular thing so this has actually happened i mean this is what uh, this is there so if you do a google search about that you can find out about you know these things they have been there 
Uh, so this comes as a you know a global uh, market uh, architecture which is unfettered by geography, independent of any constitutional constraints. Because as as you we have just shown that you know regulation does not work or has not been able to work. So there's hardly any regulation about that. And even whenever there are regulations, they have a way of you know going around those uh, regulations. So it poses you know uh, risks to freedom, dignity, and the sustenance of liberal order. So uh, this is the final slide, and the, what it means is that you know the means of productions are subordinate to an elaborate new means of behavioral modification, so which relies upon a variety of machine learning techniques. So uh, first of all, you know their extraction imperative of extracting as much information from as many people as possible. So when they are, you know, when there are, you know, terms of you know getting more and more people in, inside that. Uh, you know uh, internet umbrella they want more and more uh, data points about more and more people so that extraction imperative you know goes on to those prediction imperative so using those at extraction or uh, data extracted data to predict about people and then using techniques of as i said tuning which is uh, some kind of nudging or herding or conditioning to shape individual group and population behavior in ways that continuously you know provide them guaranteed outcomes so you can actually predict that these are the people who can be uh, you know modified or who can be uh, kind of uh, 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 you know they can be uh, used or we can you know uh, make them make certain decisions which they wouldn't have done otherwise so we can make them vote in a certain way just by you know using their emotional conditions or their personality characteristics and their way of thought at a particular time so all these things are there uh, you know uh, so uh, this is where uh, you know i'll i'll, I'll uh, end my presentation and if there are questions uh, that you have to ask please let me know so uh, as i keep repeating it's about you know using the uh, extraction imperative to make predictions and to uh, you know uh, make these uh, behavioral changes and that's where uh, uh, yeah so i mean uh, that's that's a fabulous question uh, god saab so uh, uh, one easy thing would would be to you know well, say that you know we have to uh, uh, give go, go out of you know those uh, networks as much as possible or to but the power to realize that you know our be, be, uh, you know uh, modify uh, you know behavior might be modified or you know uh, they are using these techniques persuasive techniques if that power is with us then a lot of you know problem is being sorted out so you know uh, putting out you know uh, it's not about how much data you put out the fact that you are on, on online means you know you are uh, al already you know providing all that particular data so uh, it's not just about you know using information you know to, uh, and violating our privacy or you know doing it as a monopoly but it's about you know using the power that they have over state governments over uh, uh, nations and over you know uh, and and exercising their power over uh, societies to maybe modify their behavior so that's the power they have and uh, maybe it hasn't been used to the extent that it can be used but the fact that you know uh, it's, it's not even about that we are the product yeah so this is uh, uh, not just about uh, 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 artificial intelligence it's, it's about you know getting that massive data point which is not possible for everybody it's not possible for anybody the amount of information that we have already pro provided them you know to the extent possible so they uh, so 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 it's easier for us to for for them to uh, you know uh, use those data points to make predictions and to also uh, uh, you know help or, or to you know not just towards a particular modified behavior so if there are questions uh, i would love to answer them uh, Thank you, Shailesh. I mean, uh, if if any one of you wants to speak, you can please unmute and you know. Thank you for uh, coming in. So, uh, if you want, uh, you can just uh, unmute and uh, uh, talk to us. So, Shailesh says, uh, since most human being are inconsistent in the behavior, how long one expect the data useful or? Yes, sir. As I said, this is con that is why you know uh, this is this is real time data we, which we give them. So uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, and that's where you know the 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 uh, point is. That you know, it's not just one-time data. This, this is, this is, this is continuously improved. This is continuously, you know, worked upon to, you know, uh, provide more and more granular information about all of us. So it's not just about you know one kind of information, but you know, 
about information uh, 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 you know how it uh, you know carries on if there are any other questions any other clarification as i said you know we have uh, tried to make it very academic and there is there's a lot of uh, uh, as you say uh, uh, information that has uh, that is available you know through the research work that is there but most often you know we are not even aware of uh, uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, possibilities there so if there are any questions please let me know uh, there's a feedback link on to uh, your uh, chat box and please uh, make sure that you fill up the feedback form because uh, uh, that's how your our certificates are generated so uh, if please write your name and the email id you know uh, carefully so that you know we can provide you with uh, uh, you know the correct certificates and you'll be getting the certificates in an hour's time so within an hour you know we will be sending out the certificates so if you can you know just uh, send in your uh, feedback forms properly if there's a question please let me know i would love to uh, uh, answer them so i imagine there is uh, uh, there is it any question I, I, i i have a question yes sir sunil ji please uh, yeah i wanted to ask you how do we protect ourselves are there any kind of things that we can do practically speaking uh actually sir as i said you know this awareness is very important first of all and it, it has to be a long winding process uh, you know it has to maybe start off with maybe government regulations it has to start with you know uh, you know discussions like this it has to you know begin with uh, begin with you know how much kind of information that they actually use up because as of now you know the kind of information that they uh, you know gather from us is 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 unrivaled and there's no protection and even if you say that i do not want to give out that information there is there's no way in which you know any government agency can find out you know whether they're actually extracting that information so we are you know as as i said you know we are we are in a very very unprecedented situation so we don't even know you know how how that com you know combat will happen but but a lot of people you know talk about you know awareness for example about uh, uh, you know um, government regulations and you know as we know that government regulations always uh, are are you know uh, two sides of the same thing but you know uh, it, it has to carry on uh, like that and of course you know uh, the more uh, intense the pressure is the you know there will be more and more you know companies who will have to you know come out of this rut because you know it can't just be a one way traffic so uh, we already have you know a lot of companies who say that we are not going to you know take your data and uh, of course you know if i can take the name you know apple is coming out with all those advertisements saying that you know it's private so it's no longer there so 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 you know putting it there you know right in the agenda so when when that pressure is there and they know that you know we know so now that we know half of the uh, you know uh, problem is you know taken care of because you know this 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 had has carried on because uh, they didn't know uh, we didn't know that this is how information would go out and you know probably people would think you know that okay it doesn't matter to me and if i lay low my information i don't it doesn't matter to me but you know that you know billions of that information you know has given them capacity and uh, you know uh, shailesh was so right in suggesting that you know i mean the human be our mood changes you know maybe i'm supporting one party tomorrow i might end up supporting another party but this is continuous and they're doing it in real time mm -hmm. i mean even you know uh, probably uh, the fact that you know whatsapp is uh, like uh, uh, encrypted so on and so forth but you know uh, the fact that you know they have information about how much time you are on whatsapp you know whether you are in groups or that or whatever so that meta data itself is you know data enough to you know uh, for for their you know machine learning things because i i i you know uh, would think that, you know why would i need a wifi air conditioner you know why would i need to switch it on you know from you know <laughs> five miles away so so the reason they are providing with all, all these things is you know they they need it not only for this but for all other things you know smart tv and my, my god toys you know which which kids would use and they would record kids voices and all and i'm not sure you know this this thing is not there in uh, our society so much but you know there was a lot of you you and cry in uh, germany for example when those street cars you know would go out and they would take the pictures of people's houses and all and they, it was banned there so all the street view it was possible because you know uh, they have you know that uh, granular data pubg people would rush into you know stores because you know their uh, screens would show that this is where you're going to get your pokemon or whatever so just go there and you know uh, shoot it and that's how you know modifying our online you know uh, using our online information to modify our online behavior
so dr pande would it be advisable to break down these monopolies or to create competition in order to ensure that some ethical players that, also enter the market would, what do that, you think that would be that would be a very very difficult thing to do sir as you know i mean they are like behemoths you know that the kind of uh, as as you know i mean there are a lot of things that google does so well i mean uh, the, the google news initiative for example it's it's a very good program that they do they help out uh, they help society in many other ways so you know the moment you start acting any government starts acting so they are they are bigger than you know many governments combined so it will be very very difficult for us to but you know i mean china does the same thing you know uh, it it has its own by do to you know uh, 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 you know doing the same thing but there the information is used by the government to keep uh, you know track of you know people so it's not 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 a, not an agency doing that so so you know it it is it, the same monster you know of, of a different kind so again you know that's like thank you but dr yeah, that, these, are, these are the options thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you so i have uh, shared you know the youtube channel that you know uh, i have started recently where i you know post on videos like that so some of you would could want to you know uh, subscribe to that channel as well the feedback link is uh, there so please uh, uh, put in the feedback also let us know you know what kind of things that you would like to have next week i want to uh, i plan to come back and talk about you know uh, 18 uh, cognitive biases that cloud our uh, decision so we'll be talking about uh, cognitive biases to uh, next week next saturday uh, on the same time so would love to see uh, most of you back uh, thank you friends thank you uh, senior colleagues thank you everybody for your support and your uh, good wishes so uh, i take your leave now thank you thank you very thank you very thank you thank you yes sir thank you thanks a lot